It's a lot at stake when Werribee took on Geelong for the last remaining place in the grand final to play Port Melbourne. David Rhys-Jones at various stages it looked like Geelong were going to romp it in. It turned out to be one of the most exciting finishes we've seen all season. One of the most remarkable games I've ever seen. It was just, uh, look, Geelong just controlled the match for basically three and a half quarters. But, uh, and they were terrific early. They, um, you know, set up by their, their big men. It was uh, Oren Stevenson in the ruck and the big fella Dawson Simpson who just controlled things and were able to give their uh, smaller midfielder an armchair ride. That was their one and only goal Werribee in the first quarter. Geelong were inaccurate. They got goals from Walker, Stringer and Stevenson, but they kicked three goals five in the first quarter and many of those five behinds were very gettable. So they should have been further in front of quarter time. Yeah, they just dominated that first quarter and, and really the first half. Um, Werribee were just on the back foot and very reactive to what was happening around them and uh, didn't really, you know, until after half time, didn't really put the foot on the accelerator and show any inclination to, to win the game. Now, what about this? Ben Spate kicks this goal. This is the first goal of the second quarter. They get it back to within eight points, and all of a sudden you think, here comes Werribee. And then Geelong flexes the biceps and went bang, 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 bang. Four goals, four minutes. Yeah, and there's a great goal there by young Stringer, who uh, he's a good mover and flashed in and out of the play. We didn't see much of him late in the game, but... Uh, He'll be important in the grand final. And Hogan, that was the fourth of those goals. They were out to a 33-point lead. After that, though, the next 24 minutes of the quarter, it was very much even. Werribee worked their way back in, but the problem was it seemed as though the damage had been done. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it was only the Werribee players who, who honestly thought there was still a chance and uh, the way they're playing. But they come out, they tackled a lot harder. This is a great goal here by a young fella Holden. And, yeah. Uh, to be able to pluck that out of the air, get it onto his left foot and kick a goal from that position is sensational. One of the VFL-listed players as well. Look at this for team play. This was absolutely brilliant at the 12-minute mark. And again, it finished off another clump for Geelong where they kicked four goals in six minutes. Werribee having a bit of a snooze cost them dearly. Yeah, they did. And, and it was a lack of pressure they were able to apply by tackling. And uh, it wasn't until, you know, after half time that they really sort of switched on, I suppose, and, and flicked the switch and started playing good competitive football. And this competitive football brought them four goals, the last of them being Ben McKinley. They got it back to 23 points just before three quarter time. But then Holden came up with another goal. And then in the last quarter, they raised a real gallop, kicked a couple of goals. Costello got one, and they got back to within that four goal buffer again but then there was a big turnover in the middle of the ground and it looked curtains when this goal came to George Burbrick. Yeah and um, you know Cam Pedersen who had a terrific day was uh, you know it was just a poor kick in, into the midfield but uh, and, and, and they paid a price there but uh, they just kept coming wherever they didn't lie down they uh, kept coming right through it. There's a great mark by Mad Jack Daw, who's just heightened spring was able to get him up how about the there kick? And, and just a sensational kick, yeah. 31-minute mark of the last quarter. They get back to within five points. It was desperate in the final turn. The Cats breathing a sigh of relief. Scott West couldn't believe it on the final siren. And really, they dodged a bullet. Werribee knowing that a couple of lapses cost them so dearly that they were probably their own worst, Werribee, and, uh, own worst enemy in lots of ways, Werribee. And the Cats get through to the grand final. Yeah, they do, and it's going to be a great grand final. A running Premier's port up against the Cats, and uh, the speed of the Cats could be a worry. What a game. It turned out to be less than a kick in it at the end. The final scores, Geelong 16-12, 108. Werribee 15-13, 103. The Tigers bow out, and the Cats go on to the big one against Port Melbourne in 2012.